sermon will be from Psalms, the 62nd chapter, verses 5 through 12, also from the lectionary on today, Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12, and they read, For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is in him. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in God at all times, O oh people, Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. And steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The sermon title is Faith in God Alone. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Melt us and then like pottery mold us. Like a pitcher fill us and then use us in your service. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Life takes many twists and turns, many unexpected twists and turns. Our preaching schedule was for Pastor Sarah to preach today, and as she texted me and told me she thought she was in labor, she said, and I prepared a good sermon. <laughs> we then expected to have a baby shower after worship today, but all of this reminds me of Proverbs 16 and 9, which says, the human mind plans the way, but the Lord directs the steps. So let me say again that life takes many twists and turns, some as exciting as a new baby and some not so exciting and not so joyful like the loss of a loved one. Today's prayer requests were kind of this example. We heard sadness and joy, celebration and farewells and and other celebrations and honor, we heard it all. Life takes many twists and turns. On any given day, joy can enter your life just as easily as sorrow. And just as joy enters your life, at the exact same time, sorrow is entering another person's life. This is indeed life. Jesus shared a similar sentiment when he said in Matthew 5, 45, that God makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. And since that is true, it would not be wise for our faith, our belief in God to be determined by the presence of sun nor the absence of rain. It would not be wise for our faith in God to be established only by our good times. And it is not really faith that it is determined by having our way 
or things going the way we want them to go or even as we have prayed for them to go. It rains on the just and the unjust, but there's something about us as humans that we believe when things are going well, but our faith gets shaky when things don't go so well. It's not much different from being a fair weather friend, friends who are in your life when things are going well in your life, but then pull away from you when things go wrong. It's not much different from being a fair weather fan who supports a sports team as long as that team is winning, but as soon as the team starts losing, they not only stop showing support for the team, but they also jump on the bandwagon of the winning team. Somebody knows what I'm talking about, Hello. especially here in Chicago. Loyalty, until there is trouble, is no loyalty at all. Whether it's friendship or fanship or faith. So how do we build faith, a faith that stands the test of time, a faith that allows us to endure trouble and still trust God? How do we develop a faith that allows us to be like the psalmist today who says, trust in God at all times? Not the kind of trust that tries to sugarcoat the bad times by saying God is good all the time and all the time God is good. But the kind of faith that says despite the bad times or maybe even because of the bad times, I will trust in the Lord. So many psalmists, songwriters have expressed this sentiment. Songwriter Andre Crouch penned these lyrics. I thank God for the mountains. And I thank God for the valleys. I thank God for the storms he brought me through. For if I'd never had a problem, I'd never know that God could solve them. I'd never know what faith in God can do. So through it all, anybody knows the song? Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Donnie McClurkin said it this way, that in the bad times when I don't feel God near, I will trust. Such declarations, Andre Crouch's through it all and Donnie McClurkin's I will trust or the psalmist of Psalm 63, God alone is my rock. Trust in God at all times. Such declarations came not from sunny days, but from gut-wrenching, challenging days and life events. So the first response to my question of how do we build a faith that stands the test of time is to understand that adversity can be and has been a builder of great faith. There's another song as I was preparing this sermon that kept coming into my spirit. It's a hymn whose history bears it out. The hymn is, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. This hymn was written by Louisa Steed in 1882. Listen to the lyrics, the first verse and refrain. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise and to know thus saith the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I've proved him o'er and o'er Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for faith to trust him more Louisa Steed, I hope I'm saying her last name right, S-T-E-A-D, didn't just think these words up on a nice sunny day. This song of trust in Jesus emerged from tragedy. According to the hymnologist Kenneth Osbeck, Miss Steed's family, husband and daughter, they were enjoying the beach on a sunny day in Long Island, New York. When they heard the cries of help, of a boy drowning in the sea. Her husband jumped into the water to save the boy, and as often happens, 
The struggling boy pulled Mr. Steed underwater with him and both drowned before the terrified eyes of Louisa and her daughter. Hymnologist Osbeck says, out of Louisa's why, her questioning God after this happened, emerged this hymn, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Maybe her prayer, the last line of the refrain, is your prayer today. Oh, for grace to trust him more. She, she acknowledged that she trusts, but she also acknowledged that she needed more faith. And she, she asked God for the grace to trust him more. That's the goal of the psalmist today, to encourage the faith of the community to move them in the face of adversity to unshakable faith in God. And he begins the psalm, the message to his community, by expressing his own faith, setting the example for the community. In verse 1, he says, For God alone my soul waits in silence. He alone is my rock and salvation. He repeats this again in verse 5 and 6. For God alone. My soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. Throughout the psalm, the psalmist repeats the word alone. God alone. God alone. God alone. Seems the psalmist is addressing a tendency within the community to have partial faith in God and partial faith in other beings and things. And he addresses a few of these things we tend to put our faith in. First, he addresses a tendency to put faith in other humans. Verse 9, he says, and this is from the Common English Translation, human beings are nothing but a breath. The psalmist says, human beings are nothing but lies. They don't even register on the scale. Taken all together, they are lighter than a breath. And I'm sure that the human beings in the mind of the psalmist, or let me say, I'm not exactly sure, but my bet is that the psalmist has in mind the leaders even political leaders, those who the people, the community he is addressing look to for answers, for guidance, for direction, for resources, for safety, for salvation even. And while we need to have certain expectations of our leaders and hold them accountable, it's good for us to hear and heed the psalmist's words, first to hear that humans don't even register on the scale when compared to God. That God's ways are so much higher than humans that if your trust is in humans, you're on the wrong path. And yes, we have systems that require us to have leaders. The psalmist's words help us to keep our trust in those humans in its rightful place. They are human. Their power is limited. Often their promises are false. Humans have learned to tickle the ears of the people, and so many people become sheep under some leaders, and they hang on to the words of humans. There's nothing new under the sun. Human leaders will often say what people want to hear in order to get power. And in this political season, we will be bombarded by humans seeking power. And they can be outright nasty as long as that resonates with their base. I hear the amen lights. Amen. And while I'm totally committed to participating in political processes, too many people have died for my right to vote, so therefore I will vote and I will even organize voters. I also know, as the psalmist says, that they don't even register on the scale when compared to God. So participate, I will. I even plan to, as I said, lead, get out the vote campaigns. It's so important. And I'm with the psalmist. Have faith in God alone. 
Not only does he take on when we put our faith in humans, but the psalmist takes on something that we rarely see in the sacred text, and that is a word against criminality among the people of God. It's very interesting, this text. Listen to verse 10. Put no confidence in extortion. The common English version says, put no confidence in violence and set no vain hopes on robbery. The psalmist apparently knows his audience and the spirit knows human propensities. And extortion and robbery and violence are among those human ways of being. Rarely in the sacred text do we see these behaviors being addressed within the community of the faithful. These are usually the things that the enemies are accused of, but the psalmist is keeping it real today. He's apparently seen some things and, and knows that there are times when people of faith turn down the wrong path. Hear the word of God. Don't put your faith in doing wrong. When life gets difficult, don't go on the wrong path to get what you want. Literally, don't become a criminal. Don't steal and don't cheat and don't lie and don't turn to violence. The psalmist says, have faith in God alone. And you may not think that's a word needed among the faithful, but there it is. Psalm 62 and 10, underline it when you get home, share it with those you love. He continues in verse 10 and he says, if riches increase, don't set your heart on them. The psalmist and the spirit knows that people put faith in wealth. His godly wisdom is that if you gain wealth, don't set your heart on them. How do you know if your heart is on your wealth? Well, if it were all gone tomorrow. Would you be able to carry on, or would you, like the rich young ruler in the Gospel of Matthew, fall into deep despair? The scriptures often give this message that those with great wealth are at risk of having faith in that wealth. Jesus says in Matthew 19, 23 and 24, truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The psalmist and the spirit says to those who gain wealth in this life, don't put faith in your wealth. Have faith in God alone. The psalmist has named the things that compete for our devotion. He has admonished us not to put our faith in humans or in ourselves through cheating and violence, taking the wrong path to get what we want, and not to trust our wealth. The psalmist is advocating for complete trust and faith in God and God alone. Again, in verse 8, he says, trust in God at all times, O people, Pour out your heart before God. God is, the, is a refuge for us. And within that verse is an instruction I'd like to land on for a moment. It's the B clause, if you will. And, and that is to pour out your heart before God. Have you ever poured out your heart to God? If not, I encourage you to pour out your heart to God. That this is the path to faith in God alone. This is the path to seeing God move in your life. This is the path, church, to seeing God move in our lives. Yet, this is the path that many won't take. Sometimes people think it's too emotional to, to pray and to pour out your heart to God, that that's beneath me. I'm, that's going to seem like I need something. If I pour out my heart to God, but the sacred text, the psalmist says, pour out your heart. Now, we'll, we'll pour out our hearts to humans, but we won't pour out our hearts to God. We'll even pour out our hearts on social media. 
but we won't pour out our hearts to God. You've heard me say we need both Jesus and a therapist, so yes, pour out your heart to humans. That, that can indeed be therapeutic. And have faith in God alone. And faith in God alone grows through a commitment to prayer. The psalmist says, pour out your heart, and clearly he's speaking from experience. This has been his path way to his life, a life in which he says in verse 5, for God alone my soul waits in silence for his hope is in God, a faith life in which God alone is his rock and his salvation, his fortress, that he shall not be shaken. The psalmist says in verse 7, on God rests his deliverance and his honor. God is his mighty rock, his refuge in God. And after his testimony and all that God has been for him, the psalmist tells his community, trust. You, you've heard my testimony, so now you trust in God. And God alone, and I appreciate the psalmist's words and encouragement, and his words surely resonated with his community. They understand fortress. They understand refuge. When he says God is his fortress and his refuge, that God is his strong rock, his words resonated with his audience. But maybe not so much with a contemporary audience, maybe not so much with you, so I pray my words and testimony resonate with you, for there has been nothing more fulfilling in my life than having faith in God. For in my life, God is love and God is justice. God is equity and God is peace, perfect peace. So I admonish you to have faith in God alone. God is creativity and God is beauty. God is laughter and God is joy, so I admonish you to have faith in God alone. God is provision. God will provide Jehovah Jireh. God is ultimate planner, the ultimate planner. Have faith in God alone. God gives revelation, answers to problems. God will order your steps as God has ordered mine. Have faith. In God alone, for God is a deliverer, God is freedom, God is victorious, and in so many ways, God has made my dreams come true. And God's not done. Have faith in God alone. Above all, God is faithful. The scriptures say God is faithful, God will do it. And nothing and no one compares. Have faith in God alone. What is your testimony? Has God showed up in your life? Have you ever poured out your heart to God and God somehow gave you that sign, that sense, that answer that showed that God indeed heard you when you cried? The psalmist instructs us to pour out our hearts and this has been not only his pathway to life, but my pathway to my faith life. So live your life, love your family, work with humans, vote for humans, participate in politics, build your careers, gain financial security, travel, enjoy life, mourn with those who mourn, rejoice with those who rejoice. Yes, do all the things that God affords us as humans to do. But hear the closing words of the psalmist, and these words I share with him, power and steadfast love, great is your mercy, they said, belong to God. Have faith in God alone. Oh, for grace to trust him. <laughs>